this awesome panel enough time to give you uh, wisdom about social media. Uh, I'm actually not going to do full bios like I did this morning um, because you're going to learn about them through what you're about to see on screen. Uh, but just very quickly, <laughs> that is true. See now you you can already see why we have Mercedes on the panel. So <laughs> this is not a what to do, what not to do, what to wear, not to wear. Um, this is a uh, not even a best practice actually. But I'm going to let Savannah take you through why why you guys were were asked to be on this particular panel. But I think it's going to be obvious. Uh, I do want to introduce Savannah Hughes, who is from Housworth Co., the same company that. Kevin Hausworth from, from this morning, the storytelling expert. Uh, she also has a deck in her a slide in her deck who's going to explain who she is and why um, she is an expert at this. So we're very grateful to her for being here. She is an expert in this field. Uh, and then just in order, uh, here we have Rini Moss. And I think a lot of you folks know each other, but Rini Moss, an NF1 mom, is on our panel. Mercedes Christensen, an NF1 patient. And Sheila Drovienko, an NF1 patient as well. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Savannah. Can you all see me and hear me if I sit down here or would you prefer I stand? I'm in heels. God bless all of you. <laughs> take them off. Take them off. My pedicure is really oh, gosh. <laughs> So, hi everyone. So, let's talk about what we're going to do together today. And please make sure to have a piece of paper, pen, whatever, because we're going to be taking notes. Together, we're going to go through five different things. We're going to... Hi, is this better? Awesome. So together we're gonna accomplish five things. We're gonna choose the right social media platform or platforms for you. We're gonna talk about your social media goals. We're gonna create a call to action that could help foster awareness, that could build community or raise funds. We're gonna talk about how we can make content that educates and inspires and how to share your NF story. So, a brief introduction. Hi, I'm Savannah. I use she, her pronouns. Um, a little bit about my history online. I've raised over $6.8 million for grassroots movements, progressive causes, and values-driven organizations in 2018. I collaborated with the nation's largest social movement on social media strategy, including the launch of their vertical video content. I know some of these ladies here know why vertical video is so important. Um, I also have a rare genetic disorder, so shout out to the P10 community. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am a proud dog mom. I live in the Bay Area. I am firmly passionate that dim sum is the perfect brunch, and I love a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> so, there is a separate conversation that's happening online. It's really, really big, it's constantly changing, and it's always on. And what I want to do today is empower you to be a part of it. And so if this sounds like an intriguing challenge, I want you to think about a couple of things that are happening online. Millions, millions of Americans consider themselves to be content creators, and they aren't all the Mercedes of the world's, you know, verified blue check mark, a big deal. They're folks just like you and me that have found a friendly pocket of the internet and something that they are passionate about, ending NF. On average, Americans spend six hours and 42 minutes looking at a screen, and that number has probably only increased thanks to COVID. So you have a huge audience that's waiting for them to capture your attention. And most importantly, video is king. There's over 1 billion users on TikTok, a platform that evolved from lip syncing into an absolute monolith. But you really have to be quick. 60% of all videos on the internet, every single video is under two minutes long. YouTube is really the only exception to this where videos average about 10 minutes. And most importantly, your voice matters. Over 60% of Americans think social media has given voices to people with interesting stories and a lack of representation, just like the NF community. So what can you even achieve? Um, here are just really a few things that you can achieve on your own social media platforms the way that they are right now. 
I would urge you to pick just one or two of these things and really dive deep. And we see a few people here next to me that have really exemplified these achievements. Sheila has built an incredible community on Facebook groups. Mercedes is a personal st storyteller, thanks to her TikTok. And Rini has raised some serious money to fight to end NF. This is a big deal. Um, would y'all ladies like to say something about what you've been able to achieve thanks to social media? Should I go first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, whoever. Well, first of all, my name is Sheila Mulligan Drevianco. I grew up on the north side in Rogers Park, no stinking suburb. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nine brothers and sisters, and I'm the only one with NF. I was born with an ulnar dysplasia. And on uh, Sunday nights, as you can see, a lot of you know what that is, it's very rare. Um, on Sunday nights, when my family was around the dinner table, my, when we were having chicken or pot roast for dinner, chicken usually, my father would say, okay, everybody, let's find a bone for Sheila's arm. And so that's how I, we got interested in, um, and I got interested in learning more about dysplasia and trying to find more information about it. So when the time came and I was officially diagnosed and I started trying to figure out how I could find more information about what interested me the most about NF, I, um, I was looking for some sort of Facebook page that talked about um, PA or ulnar dysplasia. And as you know, there, if those of you that are on Facebook, and if you were here the other day, you heard me say that that's all I do. I don't do Instagram. I don't or TikTok or any of that stuff. But anyway, so I did find uh, a private Facebook group, and it's called Congenital Sued Arthrosis Support Group. And so my, my point to everybody here is to try to find something that interests you specifically about your form of NF or what you're interested in, and just start going into the Facebook pages and seeing if there's some sort of topic that interests you. And I think I, some of you saw this the other day. This is a list that I've come up with. These are Facebook groups, not pages. And so as you know, everybody kind of might know the difference between the two, but I have the number of members of each group and I know if they're public or private. So my advice would be just to go ahead and start looking at trying to find different Facebook groups that would interest you. That's awesome. And Mercedes, what do you have to say about what you've been able to achieve online? So, so my Facebook didn't do very much. And I always use my Facebook to either promote NF, the CTF, or my mom's books. Because I'm a big fan of my mom and she's my biggest supporter. <coughs> and then for some reason I decided to do TikTok. And my first TikTok ever I did was about me donating blood at the height of the pandemic because of the um, absence of donators during the pandemic because nobody was going out, nobody was, everybody was afraid. And I got some pretty rude comments. Um, WTF is wrong with your face. Ew, I won't want your blood. Um, and so I did a response to the WTF is wrong with your face. Now, my mom told me, honey, you need to talk like Mr. Rogers and not my Mr. Rogers. My mom's husband is Mr. Ro is Mr. Rogers and not the nice one. <laughs> and so I just stayed true to yourself. So when you're going to be on social media, don't be a character, be you. And so in my truest, sweetest honey self, I explained WTF is wrong with my face, which is nothing, and that I have a genetic disorder. And I explained what it was, and it went from there. I went from 250 followers to 1,000 followers within a week, Dang. Which, <laughs> which didn't let me go live. And I was able to reach more people with going live. And, you know, I get the hater comments, and for the most part, I ignore the hater comments unless I can use it to educate. And I let my followers um, do the do the shame, shame on you thing. And then I hit 10,000 followers, which then allowed me to actually earn a little bit of money, which I've used to donate to the CTF or, you know, 
other charities. And so the biggest thing is when you're on social media, be yourself, don't be a character. Love that, love the growth. You got some a real following. That's yeah. really impressive. Yeah, I'm at now 60.6 thousand. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, Rini, what have you been able to do online? I mean, how do I follow that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all. Um, so, some of you know my background is in student affairs, higher education. So, Facebook started in a university. So, I can remember being like, is this a good thing for our students or not back in? The day. Back the day, in the day, back in the day, yeah. back in the day. Um, but I, I kind of embraced it because I was like, I need to be present with my students, kind of you know, positive role modeling, kind of that kind of thing. And so I've always kind of done Facebook and some things like that. And that's where we started telling our story after our son's diagnosis um, when he was six in 2011. And that was a significant part of raising awareness about the NF Walk that we started, fundraising, you know, people, you know, donated significantly, you could link things, um, drop a link in for the walk or anything like that. So I started on Facebook, we, we migrated over to Instagram as well. And I do some stuff on Twitter too. If you yeah. don't know, Twitter is a very big community for the scientific community. So while I'm fundraising as well, I'm also pointing out to the research community and the medical and the clinician community, how much we appreciate what they're doing and their dedication on Twitter. So I tweeted a couple of things this morning and I see a lot of Dr. So-and-so's retweeting it, hearting it, et cetera, just trying to motivate, you know, the folks that you've heard from here as well. So um, I have no idea how many followers I have. I, like you said, Mercedes, I try to be true to myself, tell our story. I'm a person of faith. I, I mean, I'm not afraid to admit that and share that. Um, and just naturally, we just share our story. And if it organically raises awareness, which it does, Great. I get contacted, you know, via private message on Instagram and Facebook from parents and patients all over the world asking, how can we access Casel Hugo? Tell me more about your son. How did you have these experiences? And just I try to be a connector back to whatever resource they can, um, because I think that's the power of social media. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have said it any better myself. So but here's the thing. You are your own best social media strategist. Social media cannot do everything. It is not the silver bullet. I want to urge you to decide which tools and platforms are important to you and what you can do without. So there's a lot of them out there. There's too many social media platforms. Which one's best for you? I hear this a lot and like, girl, trust me, I know. So let's talk about how we can really just sort through this mess and really i it all kind of goes back to you how do you want to show up online do you want to listen do you want to learn do you want to co-create do you want to engage so i would urge you to think really deeply about this question because it's how you're going to figure out where you belong online so Here's the thing where people usually mess up. They'll start from the outside of this circle thinking, what social media platform should I be on? But that's wrong. I would urge you to start from the middle and work your way out. So start with you and work your way out because the icons might drop off. If you look closely on this, you'll see things like Friendster, MySpace, <laughs> um, some of these pedals might change where some of them just might not be relevant anymore, but the center remains your core. It's you showing up authentically online, because when we start with your goals, your vibe, your talents, you'll naturally gravitate to places where you belong, whether that's Twitter, Tumblr, or TikTok. But let's talk about some of the big ones. So Facebook. I want you to really aim for thumb stopping attention grabbing content it's a great place where you can broadcast static visual content where you could do lots of great relationship building like Sheila's Facebook groups and you're capable of targeted amplification so that lots of people in the NF community know exactly what you're talking about but broad and relevant reach so my corner of the internet on Oakland, you could still reach me just like 
this corner of the internet in Chicago. Um, let's see. Your, is there anything else that y'all would add about um, the power of Facebook with NF? Well, I'll say that one of my most um, visited Facebook pages is the adults with NF. Mm -hmm. That's I have there's 1.2 thousand people on that right now. Wow. Children's Tumor Foundation. We get all sorts of people sharing experiences, adults sharing experiences and mm -hmm. forming camaraderie between each other. Yeah, forming camaraderie, building community, just like knowing you're not alone, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And then Instagram, this is where I really see that you could be a little bit more wild, a little bit more creative, throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. You are just going to be testing, 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 and learning from what your data is telling you. So if you see something gets two likes, it didn't work, no big deal. But if you see something is getting thousands of likes, let's learn from that and figure out what the data is telling you. Instagram is really a living magazine. So let's celebrate the visuals and the algorithm will promote you higher in news feeds if you use their unique features. So if you use stickers, IG lives, reels, people will see your stuff sooner. And if you see someone else's post that you think is great, share it. The NF community really thrives when all y'all share each other's work. Mm -hmm. Um, any other thoughts about Instagram? Oh, yep. Yes. <laughs> Retweet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <Heart. laughs> and so let's talk about Twitter. And I think Rini brought up something really interesting. Um, you are able to insert NF patients and advocates into real time relevant conversations with scientists, with reporters, with anyone who's really a key decision maker. A lot of those folks are going to be on Twitter. And I really like Twitter because you have to keep it short and sweet. You only have 280 characters to work with. So brevity really matters. And you can be speedy. So agility and just being quick really matters most on this platform. And finally, TikTok. Keep it short, keep it bite-sized, you could be a little edgier because there's going to be a lot of younger folks on TikTok. And when I say short, I mean short. The best performing videos are probably about seven seconds long. Anything y'all want to see about Twitter or TikTok? Just with Twitter, or TikTok, excuse me. It is short, the shorter the better. Um, don't do the three minute videos because no one's going to watch that they'll watch maybe maybe 65 70 seconds worth so if you can keep it under 70 seconds and you'll get more engagement also be yourself i can't i can't stress that the most be yourself because people want to see you they don't want to see some character. They don't want to see carbon copies of every other person. They want to see you and show them your vulnerability. Love that. I think that's exactly right. So let's take three minutes and write down three things that you would like to achieve with your own personal social media platform right now. Does anybody want to share any of their social media goals? That's okay if you don't want to, and this is just brainstorming.
Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was gonna say, uh, it just needs a minute when it's been turned off. So <clears throat> and since this was per personal for me, uh, not necessarily for my son, I was thinking of hope, whimsy, and connection. Love that. Okay, here I go. Um, okay, so for me, it's about self-love and acceptance. Yeah. Something yeah. that I want to help others achieve, um, give hope, and NF awareness. That's amazing. I love yeah. all of those. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving. So you picked your platform. Now what? Let's talk about what you're going to say. How do you share a personal, complicated, nuanced story online? And the answer is with really strong messaging. Now, messaging can kind of sound like one of those jargony buzzwords, but let's talk about what it really means. You are really strong messaging consists of things that are credible, concise, relevant, compelling, contrasting, repeated, and values driven. So, what does it mean when you're credible? The stuff that you say and who you are means something. Your content is what you say, and your messenger is who says it. It is concise, so it is clear and free of jargon. We want to eliminate as many sort of complicated and scientific terms as possible. Mm -hmm. I always try to think of my little brother. He is 18 and 100% sure that he is smarter than me. <laughs> and so if I can capture his attention and he knows what I'm talking about, then it's probably going to be good for the internet. Is it relevant? So is it timely? Um, is it compelling? Do you draw your audience in? Is it contrasting? It offers a choice and defines your really your opponent. Your opponent could be someone who isn't in favor of funding NF um, research. It could even be the disease itself. It is repeated. People don't remember stuff. They really don't. And so by you need to consistently tell your story. And strong messaging, most importantly, is values driven. It is authentic. It is not a slogan. It is not a hashtag. It is not a 10 point plan for your mission to do whatever. It is authentic to who you are. So let's take another two, three minutes to write down three messages about your NF story that you'd like to share on your social media. And we're gonna be showing some videos in a hot sec for the AV team. Thanks. About one more minute left. Would anyone like to share any of their key messages in the next 30 seconds we have? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, one of my key messages would be about uh, the need for healthcare in my area. There's no clinics, there's no doctors. Um, so getting, yeah, the message out about need for more healthcare or any healthcare, really, yeah. honestly. Yeah. That is evergreen, that is important, mm -hmm. and it could be repeated in so many different ways in so many different fashions. Mm -hmm. Mine was it wasn't so wordy. Um, it was just we were alone, and we were adrift, and we we're home. That's how I feel. <laughs> All right, let's turn on. Let's watch some NF videos. Hi all, Hurricane here. In response to this question, have you ever had someone else or yourself? attempt to pop one of them things <laughs> no i have never ever tried to pop on myself because they don't pop they're not zits and no i've never had someone try and if someone did they'd find themselves on their rear end <laughs> they don't pop they're not zits and touching them is extremely excruciatingly painful Hey, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Remy. And we're two moms from Birmingham, Alabama. We want to thank all of our supporters that donated for our 40 miles in June challenge. Thank you for your support that will help us and NF. So, let's hear from the two creators. Why'd you post this? Um, well, I was getting a few people putting in my questionnaires, you know, about popping them or in and in my lives popping them and i just i kind of lost myself and i almost went off my brand of if mr rogers won't say it you know don't say it <laughs> um and so i did get a little salty but sometimes you just have to, and well that is me i am i'm brash sometimes and um it's just need to know that people can't cross those kind of boundaries. That's a boundary. Why would you come up to someone and start putting your hands on them and pinching zits? Uh, not a normal person. No. <laughs> so. I think for me, and that was, I think that was Instagram shared to Facebook, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Lindsay is a newly diagnosed family. Um, as luck would have it, she was our son's youth group intern at our church when he was in sixth grade. And she begged me to have lunch for a long, long time. And this was all pre-COVID. And I was busy and I wasn't putting her off, but I kept thinking, oh gosh, is my son acting up at church? And she just wants to have a little meaning about like concern. And I remember, I think I told somebody earlier, I pulled into the parking lot at Ashley Max for our chicken salad in Alabama. And I just felt like she's about to tell me her daughter has an F. And that's exactly what it was. She was oh. in tears and she said, I've wanted to meet with you for about a year. I finally have the courage. Our daughter was diagnosed with an F. And since then, her son and her father's, or her father, her husband, just like our family in that order. So um, we've kind of formed a friendship and I'm kind of like the old mentor mom. Um, and it was a way to get her involved in Children's Tumor mm -hmm. Foundation and connect our two communities that are kind of connected through our church, but also through two different generations. Um, and, and it's a beautiful friendship. It's authentic. It's not just for fundraising. It's not just for awareness. That's just the fruit of that relationship that's just naturally happening. So it was a natural thing for us to share it on social media. I loved all of that. I think it was spot on, but from a strategic kind of standpoint, here's why I think it was really great video content. It was short, it was authentic, it was well lit, like, and it showed your beautiful faces. Those are all tenants of no matter what you're going to be putting on social, it's all going to be good stuff. Yeah, that, that's one thing real fast. If people don't see us, if they don't see our differences, if they don't hear about us and the need to go to the CT, ctf.org, if they don't hear us say, hey, we need donations to the Children's Tumor Foundation. They're the premier entity that is looking for a treatment, cure, whatever. Then we're not going to get the funding we need. 
Absolutely. And I, I, you know, you know, well, like all of you, I want something. So my granddaughter newly diagnosed, you know, I was a first generation, my daughter, my granddaughter, I don't want her to go through everything I had to go through. So we need those donations. Absolutely. So we've talked a lot about video, but what does really good static content look like? And these are from two other uh, moms in the community. So this is really great static content because you can see that it uses niche hashtags to find the right audience and it told a succinct story. They were talking about their children and what it was like for them to parent as an NF mom. So we've talked a lot. What are three things that you could do to up your social media game right now, right this very second? You can engage with the NF community's hashtags. If you follow hashtag NF and hashtag end NF right now, comment on someone's post. Even if it's just a couple of cute emojis, the algorithm will thank you. Exactly. The other platforms will thank you. The content creators will thank you. Optimize your bio. Update your display name, descriptions, your Instagram highlights, and add a great looking profile photo so that People know who you are what, and what your platform is about. And I would also encourage you to experiment with different formats. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of heard this from other creators here. If you love still photography, try a time lapse or a carousel post or a photo dump. If you love filming videos, try live streaming because apparently you get a thousand <laughs> followers out of nowhere. <laughs> And money to donate to the Children's Tumor Foundation. <laughs> a, a double win. <laughs> yes. Uh, the algorithm wants you to try all of its new features and will push your posts to the tops of news feeds. You'll get more engagement. You'll be able to monetize and you'll be able to do really cool things. Would you all add any other tips of something that folks can do right now, right this second? Other than donate $5 to the Children's Tumor Foundation? <laughs> I mean, I'm curious if they follow fellow NF families or caregivers, does that help with the algorithm? It does. Absolutely. It does. Um, because every time you follow a person, um, that puts them up higher in the algorithm. If you, if you even put a heart on one of their posts mm -hmm. or a thumbs up, that puts them higher up in the algorithm. And if you share their post, even if you don't actually like with, um, now I just flew, flew away with TikTok. If you hit, you go to share and then you hit copy. That what that does is that actually just sticks it kind of out in that algorithm and pushes that post out to more people. So if you do that, um, also on TikTok, like, comment, share. Mm -hmm. And if you say those three words, like, comment, share, that will put this out. and TikTok is very big on hashtags. Yes, huge, huge on. So on all my in ones that I that I do with in that have to do with NF, I have a whole string of hashtags. I use hashtag CTF, hashtag Kieran F, hashtag in in NF, hashtag NF, hashtag neurofibromatosis. These are all great hashtags to follow no matter the platform and yeah use those, those those can be used on any platform and that helps if you use those those things that will put your post out higher to more people because it will boost that algorithm 100 percent. so we've talked a lot of online about stuff we could do online but how do we move people to action if how do we get people to vote contribute volunteer mm -hmm. share do whatever and that's through something called a ladder of engagement. So we're gonna start at the bottom and someone who's at the aware section, they may have just followed someone on Instagram, the creator caught their attention and they just wanna kind of hang back and learn. They're 
they're, they lurk, mm -hmm. they're lurking on your profile. Yeah. So as the creator, it's your job to give them something interesting, some shareable resources, and you want to continually invite people to, uh, to really encourage participation in the fight to end NF. And it's gonna take multiple invites, multiple times. Mm -hmm. So they've been lurking on your profile for a little bit. And next, you wanna activate them. You know that they know about your cause, they know it's a tough battle and they're game to do more. And that's when you wanna bring in some, a little bit of a higher bar ask. Maybe it's a $5 monthly donation. Maybe they're regularly sharing CTF content mm -hmm. and these sorts of things. You wanna ask them to do regular things that take less than three minutes to do. Mm -hmm. Any other advice about this, ladies? Not really. In a lot of my things, you know, my lives, people always ask me, well, if it's so expensive to have the neurofibromas removed, why don't you have a GoFundMe? Mm -hmm. My answer to that is, rather than a GoFundMe to help just me, I would much rather you go to the link in my, in my bio to my, to my charity walk that I'm doing and donate $1. Oh, because I would rather reason. you help the greater good than just me. Love that. And finally, they're an advocate. You could transform just casual audience members to advocates by using petitions, pledges, mm -hmm. live activations, joining an NF walk. Are there any other sort of really big high bar actions that y'all would want people to do online? Maybe there's participating in tri a clinical trial. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think joining alongside us and kind yeah. of raising them up to be advocates yeah. and active and, and, and leaders too, to kind of give them an example, hopefully a positive example uh, to mentor them to, to join those of us in the room that are here for that very yeah. reason. All of us in this room, we have one goal that we share. And that goal is to end in F. That goal is to end the stigma that many people with NS have and hide. We need to not hide. Absolutely. And I think there are spaces on the internet and spaces on social mm -hmm. media for the NF community. So what I would say is that every call to action should bring folks up further up your ladder of engagement. Mm -hmm. And this could look very different for the NF community than it would for other causes or organizations. This is entirely customizable and up to you as the badass social media strategist. So these are just some examples that I put together, but I would encourage you to really put your own twist on it. So let's take another two minutes to write down three potential calls to action that you could share on your social media right now. And I already wrote a bunch of them for you. We've got about 30 more seconds for folks. And let's keep a move on. Okay, and then finally, I'd love to hear from the experts. What has it been like for y'all to make great digital content that moves folks to action? Sheila? Well, it, it's been very rewarding when I see someone like a page or like a comment and and sometimes I've been posting uh, the last couple of days from the, you know, from the summit and it, it's, um, it's being picked up, you know, people that I haven't heard from are liking things that I haven't seen them like anything for a while. So I'm getting the point across. Absolutely. So for me, it's given me a voice. 
and a way to get to more people because I'm always I've always been thinking what can I do I don't want my grandkids to go through what I went through what can I do and so TikTok has given me that voice and given me that reach that I never dreamed I'd have I'd never dream I'd reach you know and be able to speak to 60,000 people Dang. that's you know that's that's pretty pretty cool it's that's really a big cool. deal really cool. <laughs> big deal um real quick i would say it gives me control um to something we can't control i'm able to control the conversation i'm able to um push people out to help control it on our behalf um whether that's you know flowing the funding flowing the awareness flowing the advocacy so sharing our story has given me a level of control that's a lot cheaper than therapy mm -hmm. oh yeah bless <laughs> So, any questions? Yes. Okay, so my question is, hang on, I wrote it down because I don't think you guys. Can everybody hear me? Okay. All right, sorry. Okay, so my question is, so I work, um, I am the head of PR at a real estate company. And um, TikTok doesn't work for real estate, like no. at all. It just doesn't. Not yet. Um, not yet. So, not what is the best platform that you have found for charity? I'm not saying don't do the other ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that which one is the absolute best? When you say for charity, do you mean for raising money or what are you trying to accomplish for charity? Yeah, I would say probably for raising money. I would. Mm, I would probably say Facebook mm -hmm. um, because you're able to do small Facebook fundraisers yeah. and just set them up by yourself with minimal management. I think there are the most amount of people on Facebook. Yeah. Um, by far, actually. And mm -hmm. um, you're able, if you're able to have a sort of small paid media paid media budget or ads, you could definitely do some um, what we call direct to donate. So you click on it, donate $3 don't um, that are able to be very successful and you'll get a large return on your investment for a couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like Facebook is trying to compete in the market by doing just that. Like I've seen a lot of new things like the um, birthday fundraiser. I know a lot mm -hmm. of us do that. Um, and, and we were able to do like the um, 40 mile challenge, kind of creating a fundraising group in Facebook, um, different things like that, that didn't used to exist. And even I think Instagram just recently kind of put out a similar product that you can just kind of set a fundraising. Mm -hmm. But until recently, yes. I didn't think you could do that. That's so, a new one. Yeah. So I think Facebook is trying not to be the old rhinoceros in the room by putting some of this out there mm -hmm. in competition with like the TikToks and things like mm -hmm. that. I okay, do think cool. your larger donors and your people that have deeper pockets are still on Facebook. That's just my opinion. 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would agree. Because it, it maybe goes to an older demographic mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff for Facebook, whereas mm -hmm. Instagram is like my generation. <laughs> yep. And then TikTok. Right. Well, I know, I, you know, I know you're on there, but TikTok's yeah. usually like the younger. I don't, I'm yeah. just not on TikTok. Uh, uh, we're young. Yeah. Yeah. I true. would card all of I you out of bar. I know. That's absolutely incredible. But and oh. then another thing I wanted to ask is for the engagement for the stories. I do know that with engagement with the stories and hashtags and stories and that kind of stuff. Do you guys have any advice as far as because I do know the more that you engage your audience on stories and that kind of stuff, you put the little I like buttons and everything like that, and the more you engage, the more the people follow you and the more they pull up and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any advice for you know the best type of stories to make or, or anything like that? Short I know, and sweet. With that question. Short and sweet. Yep, definitely keep it short and sweet. I think stories are a really great place to do mm -hmm. a lot of volume. If you want to have a bunch of stories, go for it. You don't need to just have one or two because you're competing with a lot of other social media creators and they're doing like 40 stories in two hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is, I think Instagram stories are a really great place to test your ideas before you want on a really commit to something that you would have on your grid where you're like mm, does this sound great does this look great and if it doesn't it's only going to be up there for 24 hours and so you're not like 
memorializing something that you're like, that wasn't a great idea. Yeah. Um, and for people that are new to this or kind of dabbling, I'll give you, I'll be real vulnerable a second. I did my first reel and I had nothing to do with NF. I made a Southern tomato pie because I'm very proud of my garden. And I was like, well, let me try to do like a, you know, how do we do this? And I set it to Hungry Eyes, which is the song from Dirty Dancing because it was really good pie. You know, kind of like building it. I had no idea. I had all of these likes, I'm like it's a pie. Like that's what gets it. I just mm -hmm. think real is really something. Yeah. Something hit with the real. Yep. And so it was my test to now kind of co and kind of create more in depth content for yep. NF and awareness with the with the real. Yep. So and daily posting. Yep. Daily posting. Consistency is definitely key. That is something that social media algorithms look for. They are hungry for content and you could feed the monster with stories and it's an easy little thing to do. Mm -hmm. And if you need my recipe, it's on Facebook. <laughs> Most important. I, I definitely want that recipe. I love tomatoes. I see someone with their hand raised. It was, it was really just more of a co uh, comment from my own experience trying to, I manage a uh, a Facebook page for my my program and it has to do with content generating daily content I mean it's hard I mean totally like we all have lives I'm pretty sure um and so you can reshare content but also you know you, you know say you do an event or you do you can split content um say you have like an hour to do your Facebook post you can schedule them mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so for the week so like if you just even just do it once a week but you can schedule your post um to mm -hmm. parcel out throughout the week or even longer um, and it's the same for, you know, the other platforms, but I know less mm -hmm. about them, but, but yeah, it doesn't have to be super hard. It does not have to be super hard. And I think that's a hundred percent correct for, um, you can definitely batch and schedule your content out where, you know, this is never going to change. I'm always going to want to ask someone for $5 for the children's tumor foundation, or this article is going to be pretty timely for a while. You don't have to be stuck to your phone. You can schedule it out, put it away, go hang with your kids, go outside, go touch grass, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether y'all heard Matt Hay earlier saying Sunday night is a good time to yeah. post content. And I don't know if you had any comment on that either. Like when are people really on their phone in terms of the timing of scheduling that? Um, uh, it's different for different profiles mm -hmm. and different folks. That's where I think testing really kind of comes in. Mm -hmm. Um, like, have you found anything with your profile, Mercedes? Um, I found weekends and probably the time frame, probably. Well, my time, 10 p.m. I live in mountain time, 10 p.m. to midnight is where I get the most engagement on my lives. Um, and then I find I get more likes and stuff because, you know, your phone bings every time you get a like on on TikTok and my phone doesn't ever stop. Um, but when when you post your content and if you post your daily post at the same time every day, mm -hmm. um, that's going to, people are going to go, oh, she's posting something new. I need to get on there. I need to see what she's going to post. So creating a little bit of reliability. Exactly. Just, just like a job, just like a job, you know, a th make a three minute, two minute video, one minute video, post it. You know, and you can, you can, like she said, you can, you can put them in your drafts. I haven't figured that out yet because I'm not that smart. Um, but you can post videos into drafts and then when you're ready to post it, you can just pick it and post it. So that is, you know, just consistently post every day, try and post at the same time every day. Um, when you go do lives and you can do Facebook lives too. Do it at the same time every day. Absolutely. We, do we have any other questions? I hope this is the last you hear from me this weekend. Uh, something that, and I, that has worked for me and it was a pretty philosophical shift in how I presented myself in building a brand um, before my role with Alexion and for myself was when I would post something instead of thinking about what what is this community going to do for me, what can I do for the community. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than what can I get, what can I give with this post 
and I could really tell a shift, uh, sometimes not in the quantity of engagement, but the quality of engagement of people recognizing that I was trying to put something out valuable in the world rather than reaching out and saying, give me this. And that can be as simple, and this is the quick rule that I use, and it's also a great rule in writing an email, whether it's personal or even at work. I'm giving my secrets away to some of my coworkers here. Uh, I, I do what I can to not start a message with the word I. And you see it over and over again. I need this. I'm reaching out. I want. And that little rule puts me in a better mindset of how I'm posting this. So let's say it's a fundraiser for an NF endurance event. Instead of saying, I'm running a 5K, I start it with, so many of you have been very supportive uh, of my family and the NF community, and you have been, you know, so I make it about them uh, and then shift it into what the post is about and it ends up being, yes, it's an ask that I'm making sometimes, um, but it really makes it about them. And when you find even an email, if it's forget social media for a second, if it's just to work with an email and you say, um, you have been waiting on me for this for quite some time, or you've been so patient or your work yesterday on the call was wonderful and then shifted into I mode. And um, it's been effective for me. Uh, and like I said, and sometimes getting to a much more quality engagement because the people receiving that are reading something about them instead of you. And we all respond well to that it's sort of human nature. I love that. I think it's a really mm -hmm. strong example of yeah. really great messaging. Mm -hmm. I think it's compelling. I think it's interesting. I think it brings folks in. And I think people really reflect and respond well to that. Yeah, that's a good point. I think we have time for like one more question or are we good? You guys have the ones in the Whova app? You... No. There are a few in there. I can ask one of those. Oh, the Whova app. Oh. Um... Uh, what are some ways to explain NF without using so much medical terminology? Ooh, I'm going to leave that to the experts. <laughs> okay, so what I do is I tell people that NF creates tumors, and they're called neurofibromas. So, you know, I do use a little bit of technology, terminology there, to grow anywhere and everywhere on the body connecting to nerve endings. And so that's just, you know, just put it like you're going to talk to your, your, your second grader, you know, and also you have to think about the age group that you're talking to. If I, a little kid asks me, you know, what happened? You know, I just say, they're just my special bumps and it's the way I was born. For teenagers, I'll, you know, I'll use what I you know, said at first and same with, you know, adults, you know, they're, they're a type of a tumor. And then with the adults, I say, and there is no cure or treatment right now. And if you want to find more about it, you can go to this page and I direct them to the CTF web page. Mm -hmm. I try really hard not to say, well, we have a genetic variant in our family that's mm -hmm. on Exxon 40. And, you know, I don't, I mean, you know, I've learned all of that, but just say, you know, there's a change in our family's DNA and who we are that resulted in this this genetic condition that causes tumors to grow anywhere in the body along nerve endings. And when our son was diagnosed and he was, I mean, it was pretty cosmetically obvious and people would ask him, he would say, what's, what's that bump on your neck? And he would say, it's a tumor, but it's not cancerous, but I have a mm -hmm. condition called neurofibromatosis. Ask my mom if you want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> Good kiddo. And he was comfortable with that. And we asked him, are you comfortable with that? Are people asking? You know, we really wanted to make sure he knew. So, you know, that's a whole other session on how do we give our kids yeah. um, appropriate protection and space to either talk about mm -hmm. it or not talk about it. And yeah. so that, that's, that's a whole other session, though. Yeah. Are there any other questions from the app? Uh, I guess there was one more. Um, is there are there any platforms that you would say are good for children or more, you know, directed towards children? I actually think TikTok is more geared towards the younger the younger crowd, and so how young? Yeah, how young? Yeah, well, 
Well, my niece is secretly on there, um, and she's not. You just <laughs> called her out. Uh, yeah, but her mama doesn't know. <laughs> um, and so, but, and you know, she, but she's a good kid, and you have to know your kid. Mm -hmm. Okay, my my niece is nine, almost ten. No, she just turned nine, and um, but you have to know your kid because there are very few. I would never let my young one on well any social media without monitoring it very closely when my daughters were little they were allowed to have a facebook i kind of fudged their ages but they were they were set to private they weren't allowed to add anybody unless they unless mama looked first mm -hmm. so you have to be the mama bear and you have to know your kids you have to know your kids as emotional maturity are they mature enough to be on social media, you know, and you have to let them know that, you know, they're going to see things on social media and ask mama if you don't understand or daddy. <laughs> Our son, if you, if you go to Hi Ho Kids, is anybody, raise your hand if you know what Hi Ho Kids is. Okay, it's this whole nother world of like they interview kids or people like, you know, interview somebody with a rare disease. And, and so Philip was interviewed and I had no idea, but the comments thousands i think there's a million comments now and they're all children oh wow like, from wow. all over the world this hi-ho kids has this huge following so i'm kind of wondering if youtube is kind of where a younger group of kids comments and inter interacts and maybe that's because parents can see it more but i was that was new to me and yeah that, and yeah. it was all appropriate content okay I'm i've, like never, heard, I've never heard of i've never heard of hi-ho i've never heard of hi-ho kids but i think there are sections of social media platforms that are appropriate for children yeah. but i would not i'm also not a parent i would direct <laughs> you know these are the experts in this field you know your kid like we're saying. yeah yeah you know your kid strong moderation don't be afraid to smash that block button don't be afraid to delete anything don't be afraid to take the phone away from the kid don't be afraid to take the phone away from um your child um i would think about youtube TikTok, mm -hmm. instagram are all places yeah. that you could consider with very strong community moderation yeah. and very strong privacy settings now one thing is with with youtube youtube actually has a way where you can sign your kid up for youtube and put age restrictions on it for their content that's an a fantastic way to moderate content because the algorithm, while we can make it work for us, it also has a mind of its own and will yeah. direct your kids to things where you're like, mm, nope, I don't think so. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're at time because the next panel is coming in. Uh, I do want to say one thing. So yes, parents know your own. I just feel like the CTF brand police has to say this. All platforms have rules and terms mm -hmm. and conditions. Absolutely. So yes. please follow those. We are not advocating exactly, for any. Exactly. Like, I just wanted to make that was clear that that's our stance. Absolutely. Uh, I do want to thank this panel, but go ahead. Why don't you close out, Savannah? Oh, no, just I want to thank you so much for your attention and thank these ladies for sharing the table with me. Thank you, guys.